Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited in our Automotive Basics series. Now this is a turbocharger, also known as a turbo, turbski, spinny boy, spoolie boy, Nagasaki noisemaker, a snail, a hairdryer, and there's many more to go with that. Now, if you're new to the automotive world, you might know that a turbocharger can add power to your engine. But the question is, how does a turbocharger work? And more importantly, why does a turbocharger work? That's what we're going to get into in this episode. Now, the reason a turbocharger is such an efficient power adder is because it's making use of something that was already leaving your engine anyway, and that is your exhaust gases. Basically, all turbochargers consist of two different housings with the center section connecting the two of them. You have the exhaust side or the turbine side, also known as the hot side, and you have the compressor or intake side, also known as the cold side, although it's only cold in relation to the hot side. Now, how do these two sides work in relation to each other? Well, as I mentioned, a turbocharger is making use of these exhaust gases, it's waste gases that are already leaving your engine. So you have a turbo manifold, which then funnels all of those exhaust gases into the turbine housing of the turbocharger. Now, what this does is it runs it around in this turbine housing here, spins it around, and you see that fan wheel here, your turbine blade. And what this does is it spins this blade extremely fast. Now, this blade is connected by a long shaft through the center housing and into the compressor housing, which itself has an identical blade mounted on it. So anytime one blade is spinning, that means the other one is spinning as well. So those exhaust gases are then spinning this blade extremely fast. And what that's doing is it's drawing fresh air in the inlet here, and then it's compressing that air and pushing it out the end right here, and this side right here is what goes into your engine. It's important to recognize with a turbocharger that these two housings are completely separate from each other in their function. So the turbine side, as those exhaust gases go in here and actually spin that wheel, after they're done, they then exit out the back like a normal exhaust does, and they're just exhausted to the atmosphere. This side, the euphemistically called cold side, is completely separate from the exhaust side, it has nothing whatsoever to do with it. It is drawing fresh air inlet through here, compressing it and sending it straight out here to an intercooler or to your engine itself. Now that's certainly an easy concept to understand, but what's not easy to understand is the true volume of air that we're actually talking about here. Because when you think about it, you're like, look how small this thing is. Just how much air could this thing actually produce or compress into the engine? You're thinking, man, a hairdryer seems to put out an awful lot of air. A leaf blower puts out an awful lot of air. Well, on one of the episodes of Roadkill way back when that they did, they actually hooked up six, I think it was six different gas powered leaf blowers all together as one. And they were able to generate, I think it was like two PSI, something like that. These guys can give you 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 PSI of boost. So that tells you just how much airflow these things are actually capable of. Now we're saying that this turbo is spinning very quickly. We are talking speeds up to 150,000 revolutions per minute. That's going to generate some air. As you can imagine, spinning at those kind of speeds will generate an enormous amount of heat. So how do you control that heat? Turbochargers are going to be at least oil cooled. Some of them are also water cooled to keep that center section cool and keep that shaft from actually seizing up inside the housing. Now, essentially all turbos have is gravity feed oil cooling. What that means is you're going to run pressurized oil to the top of the center section, and then it is going to drain out the bottom of the center section. And that drain needs to go back to your oiling system on your vehicle. That oil drain needs to be as unrestricted as possible in its flow back to your oiling system. Otherwise, if that oil backs up inside the turbocharger, it can actually get pushed past the seals in there and start going into your exhaust housing and your intake housing. And you'll notice that because it'll just start choo-chooing blue smoke out the exhaust. So that is the absolute basics of how a turbocharger works. Let's get into the more interesting information of why a turbocharger works. What are you doing with all of that extra air? So let's segue for a brief moment to talk about how an engine actually works. So essentially at its base, an engine is just a giant air pump. The more air you can move through it, the more power you're going to make. That is it at its simplest terms. So if you think about this engine right here, this is a 5.7 liter Hemi engine. In cubic inches, we're talking 345 cubic inches. What that means is that for every single cycle of this engine where all of the pistons have gone through an intake stroke at a maximum, you're talking about 345 cubic inches of air have entered this engine. But the truth is that no engine is 100% efficient. It's called volumetric efficiency. Basically, if an engine is poorly designed, you're probably somewhere in the 70 odd percent range. If it's 
adequately designed, you're looking at 80 some odd percent. And if it's very well designed, maybe the low 90% volumetric efficiency. Therefore, when you're doing bolt-ons to your vehicle, like say you're installing headers, an intake, a camshaft, larger heads, things like that, what you're trying to do when you're doing that is trying to get your engine to have better volumetric efficiency. Therefore, the maximum number we can reach here, naturally aspirated, which means no power adder, is 345 cubic inches per cycle. Any of those upgrades, those camshafts, the heads, the headers, the intake, all of that, all you're doing with that is getting closer to that 100% efficiency number. That's it. You cannot exceed that number with just bolt-ons being naturally aspirated. Now, as I'm sure you can recognize, you're basically going to have some diminishing returns the closer and closer you get to that perfect efficiency number. Say as you get around 90% efficiency, every further mod you do after that is going to get you that little bit closer to 100%, but it's, you're going to fight for every last little bit of that. That's why people who build engines naturally aspirated, they're really gluttons for punishment in my opinion, because you're going to spend a ton of money trying to get that last 4 or 5% efficiency, and in the end, your engine is still capped at what it is capable of producing as far as volumetric efficiency and how much air it can move. Turbochargers remove that cap or power adders of any kind, superchargers, nitrous, things like that. That is why me personally, I'm a huge fan of power adders of any kind because they blow right past that cap. They don't care what your engine is capable of making. They say, I'm gonna cram this amount of air down your throat and you're gonna make more power. That's why it's called forced induction. Now this is actually why we're seeing so many of these engines being created today. You see these smaller displacement engines that are turbocharged right from the factory. Now the reason for that is because at lower RPMs where you're not creating the boost, you're still getting the fuel efficiency that that smaller engine would normally have. And then when the boost comes in, it has the power of a much larger engine like this one right here. So in the end, it's as simple as that. As I said, your engine is a gigantic air pump and the more air you can push through it at one time, as long as you have the fuel to support it, you are going to make more power, it is a fact. So that's a 10,000 foot overview of how a turbocharger works and more importantly, why a turbocharger works. Obviously, I left out a ton of information here. This is just a basics video. If you guys wanna have a more advanced video on turbochargers, please let me know in the comments down below. Also guys, let me know if you wanna see more of these automotive basics videos, and if you do, what topics do you want me to cover?